exactly 100 years ago today, the Cabaret Voltaire opened in Zurich, Switzerland, which is the birth of performance art. <laughs> Welcome to the Arts Report on CITR 101.9 FM and we are, I am broadcasting to you live from the University of British Columbia Vancouver campus. Today on the show we have Space Melt. I'm very glad to have both of you here. Um, so tell me about some of the art that's going to be featured on Space Melt this year. Well, the thing about a space melt is we're not really sure what it's going to look like until it happens. And what we basically do is we get a whole bunch of different artists and musicians together and we turn them loose in a space and melt the space. And what inspired you just in the first place to even start something like Space Melt? I mean, it's already your guys' seventh anniversary. Congratulations on that. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, well, um, Sam and I met at the Banff Center in 2009, and we were each individually doing art residencies there, and I became friends with Sam and, and him and our other co-founder, Terry Haran. They invited me to participate in one of their shows. That's how I remembered, anyway. Yeah, me and Terry had really hit it off as uh, two people from totally different disciplines. Terry is an uh, experimental recorderist. Like, if you think of that little recorder you played in grade three or whatever, she is like the absolute master of the recorder, and she's got recorders of all different sizes. So we really hit it off. Like, it was really thrilling to, to play with an instrumentalist like that. And, um, yeah, when Michael came in, you know, he's just such a... I think just a fun guy to be around, but also an amazing artist. And so we just have, you know, collaborations just have this kind of synergistic kind of quality to it. And um, so we started with a few uh, events at BAMP Center that it was initially called Face Melt uh, upon the recommendation of uh, our friend Jeff Shoesmith, who was uh, coordinating the program back then. There's this perception of experimental art um, that can be at times negative. What kind of feedback have you guys gotten from um, the general public? Well, I think uh, the one thing that really stuck out in my mind is we did a show as part of a, an experimental music festival, I don't know, maybe four years ago, and we were at the very end of this long build. Honestly, some of it was really tedious stuff, <laughs> and it went on for hours. <laughs> and then we came in and we did like a 10-minute set right at the end. We got a standing ovation because people had just been you know, sitting there for so long just watching all this stuff, and then boom! It was just blew their minds. Every show we have had recently, for instance, we have a timer kind of counting down. And so there's people, when they're in the audience, know that this is not going to go on for 25 more minutes of somebody just strumming a guitar. Yeah, I mean, that's sort of the idea is that there's there's nothing wrong with a little fun at the same time. You know, like, let's, 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 <laughs> I want to have a good time. Let's all just have a good time together right now. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah. yeah. Hey, lovely to meet you. Thank yeah. you so much. See you later. Thanks. I'm backstage here at the Rio. We're on after the comedian here. We got everything ready. It's gonna be super crazy. Nobody knows what we're about to do. I hope it works. Pretty much couldn't sleep last night because we didn't know if what we're doing is a good idea or a bad idea, so. As he realizes that I, Ryan Williams, his firstborn son, therefore by law, heir to all of his lands and titles. Now, they asked me, they like they want to do this, but they won't tell me exactly what it is, and I thought, that sounds scary. Yeah. Sure. So, uh, I'm not really sure what's about to happen. Actually, so the booking situation of the show is just like, come up to Paul, and he's like, I guess. <laughs> and then you're on, baby. <laughs> Thank you. 